new from Vinegar Syndrome is Death Wish 2, available on this brand new 4K edition and, as expected, the 4K edition looks amazing. Now this isn't a movie that I'm overly familiar with, so um, just looking at it, I appreciated the way it looked, I thought the, the colours were pretty great and even the nighttime scenes kind of popped a lot. Uh, that being said, let's delve into the story of Death Wish 2. We have Paul who, recovering from the incidents in the first movie, has uh, travelled along with his daughter uh, over to California. He's settled down, he's doing his architectural gig uh, as normal, when wouldn't you believe it, he runs afoul of some gang people right at the start of this one, which I appreciated the fact that it delves straight into the story. Look at your ice cream! <laughs> He gets mugged, his wallet gets taken, he catches one of the muggers and beats them up. Unfortunately, the muggers now have his address and decide to go there uh, and attack whomever in the house to get the revenge against Paul. They stumble uh, across a woman in the house and proceed to uh, violate her while beating her at the same time in an extremely prolonged and violent sequence right from the start. This movie is really exploitation. It's etched within that world. It takes away a lot of the characteristics, uh, some of the moral ambiguity, some of the storytelling, of, and turns it into more exploitation genre cinema. <laughs> Now it depends what you kind of want in your movies. Do you want something to make you think a little bit? Do you want something to sit back and watch Charles Bronson quip some wonderful one-liners? You believe in Jesus? Yes, I do. Well, you're going to meet him. Shoot a lot of people and be generally just awesome because this is the movie that you're going to get. Takes. No time in jumping into the story, which I really appreciated. You kind of know what's going to come. The gang people uh, are, are just really over the top, loud, dangerous, vicious, without any morals or, or substance whatsoever. They are just unbridled ids tearing through this world. And it takes Paul to get into his vigilante clothes and kind of scour the streets looking for vengeance. And this is where the movie really picks up. When we've got a character who is looking to get revenge for what's happened, who knows through the events of the first movie what he can do and the lack of help that he's going to get for the police. He sidelines it. He takes justice into his own hands. There's no uh, ambiguity about whether he should or should not do it. That's just what's happening. And Paul goes on a rampage throughout the movie. Goodbye. We get several other stories throughout it as well that kind of flesh out this rather quick 92 minute runtime that we have here. We get the police route officer returning from the first movie, um, desperate to catch his vigilante character, even if he's pretending to be on holiday uh, so that he can go and investigate Paul. My chief thinks I'm on vacation. You break in here and you tell me you think Paul's a murderer. What else are you entitled to tell me? Uh, we get Jill Ireland's Gina character, who has a kind of love story, who loves this man, um, and is almost discovering the fact that he is a killer throughout the movie. Uh, we get the tale of the daughter from the first movie, who is severely damaged now. Um, and then we get the gangland people who seem to be just so destructive and, and nihilistic and just like I said, tearing through this, this world and seem to be not even challenged by anyone other than Paul. When we have Paul kind of looking for revenge, it's quick and sudden. It's not prolonged or drawn out. Um, he doesn't try to torture. He is just removing this virus from the world as he sees it. And I think Charles Bronson gives uh, a really kind of fun performance here. Considering he has his usual stony face, he has his little uh, kind of vigilante uniform, like I said, uh, to blend in with the average person. You just kind of feel that at the end of this movie, he's in a much happier place than the start of the movie. But 
it's such a destructive and violent place that he ends up. Um, this isn't one where he's done what he has to do, he's put away his weapons, he's retired. No, you feel as if the actions of Paul are going to escalate and, you know, knowing the Death Wish series part three, we know that's definitely going to happen. That guy saved our lives, damn it! Where the hell were you guys? Giving out parking tickets? I like Death Wish 2 a lot. I feel um, that it is not as rounded a story as the first one. But it doesn't matter because we get more of what made the first one so memorable in my eyes. I, I don't want to sit down um, uh, and have a moral uh, debate while watching this one. I want to sit down, I want to see bad guys get their comeuppance in a brutal fashion. I want to see them at the hands of, of Bronson taking them down. I like the fact that Bronson is not unbeatable. He gets beaten up, he gets attacked, he gets stabbed. It's just his tenacity that's driving him forward. I loved revisiting Death Wish 2. It was all kinds of vigilante goodness. I'd love to know your thoughts on the movie. What's your favourite Death Wish movie out of all of them? And tell me why in the comment box below, along with your thoughts of this movie. Now to delve on to the extras in this disc, which I can't wait to start. Thanks for watching. There is more content up here. You can see more of my stuff. Remember, like I said, drop me a comment. Love to have the conversation with you guys. Hit this video with a like button if you like the content. And if you want to see uh, more stuff, you can join me on Patreon or the membership program, which would be really amazing and is really helping me at the moment. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time on Man V Films.